Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to Supernova. Supernova is a game that is currently in closed beta and it's sort of a mix between a MOBA style game and an RTS. And I know what many of you will be thinking is like, oh my god, not another, you know, MOBA game that is, you know, gonna be just like all the other ones. This game is actually pretty cool. I played a couple games so far and it looks very, very promising. Now, this is part of a paid promotion. The developers reached out to me and asked if I wanted to cover the game. But I do want to point out that I will be very honest in my opinions and I'm not going to hold back anything nice or whatever. Uh, because, you know, they asked me to record this. Um, however, what we're going to do today, I'm simply going to hit the play button and we're going to be playing a game against AIs. The thing about um, playing the game right now versus real people is that it simply takes forever because there's not that many people currently playing. Because not that many people have access to the game. Uh, if you are interested in checking it out yourself, the beta will still be live for a little longer. Uh, so check the link down below in the description of this video or, you know, maybe you'll be able to get part of the further beta stages or even the release of the game. Um, but basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna play a practice game against computers right here. And I'm gonna cover the little gritty details that most of you will find interesting because I'm assuming here that some of you or that most of you will have, um, you know, experience with at least like your RTS games like StarCraft and, you know, maybe a MOBA like Heroes of the Storm, like League of Legends, like Dota and whatnot. But anyways, um, so the very first thing we get to choose right here is playing as a human or a cyborg. Now, I'm going to be playing human right here because I played cyborg in the previous matches that I've played. Um, and I'm going to be um, picking one of the heroes. So basically how this game is run. Um, you have, just like in all of the other MOBAs, multiple heroes available, and as you can see right now, there are not that many. I think I'm going to be playing one with uh, Nevera right here, which actually is a pretty cool character. Um, but basically, you have different heroes available, and obviously, since I'm going to be playing with bots, there will not be, like, a crazy synergy, and we will not be able to get, like, the incredible teamfights going on. But there's different heroes available, but on top of that, one of the main aspects of this game, and actually the RTS aspect, is the fact that instead of you um, just blindly walking into a lane with your hero and controlling your hero alone, you are in charge of controlling the lane minions as well. So here we are in the actual game. We are just being deployed right now on the battlefield. And this game works just like all of the other MOBAs out there in the fact that we have one main building that we need to protect and the opposing team will also have a building that they will need to protect. And if we manage to kill their building, we win. And if they manage to kill ours, we win as well. So their building is going to be all the way on the other side of the map, right around right here. And ours is going to be all the way over here. Looks like I'm going to be in the middle lane, at least for now. So this is how this thing works. So in the bottom right corner, you can see that I have some gold available right here. And there's different minions that I can start deploying. Now, I will need to start deploying those very shortly. But basically, at this point in the game, I only have the option to go for the Exoskeleton Factory, which is the very primary building that we can use, or the primary structure that we can create to gain access to the other ones. So I'm going to start off with doing exactly that. And what will happen very shortly is that the wave minions will start moving forward. And at this point in the game, you can see it's just these little dudes right here. They're not very threatening at all. They're going to be spawning in the different lanes. Actually, I think I was a little late on mine, so mine aren't actually... Or actually, maybe they're here up top. I think those are actually mine, but doesn't really matter. Um, basically, we can go ahead and spend our money on it. And as you can see right now, there's already different options available. And I can start spending this gold for the next wave that will go out. So the next wave will be activating in about 40 seconds from now. So while we are just playing like any other R or any other mobile right here, uh, while we are just in the lane and we're trying to push forward right here and we're trying to deal damage and killing towers and all that, we are also trying to actively manage what is going on in each of the lanes and how we are pushing the minions forward. So at this point in time, we can have a quick look at the overview. Uh, you can see that it's relatively even right here. We're up against Slith AI7 apparently. Um, and the lane presence of us is pretty much 50-50. However, I can start spending some money on some of these minions right here, which is what I just spent the gold on that automatically comes back to me. And very shortly, you will see that different minions will start joining the lane as well. Now, mine are likely going to be at the top lane, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um... For the simple reason that, you know, I will be able to start countering my opponent's minions by my own minions. So I can use, um, you know, what I see with my eyes. I can see what, what minions he's spawning. I can use the next wave and predict what he's going to be using in the next wave. And obviously, if you would be playing at a higher level, you would try and keep track of how much money your opponents have been gathering and how much it actually has been going down. Now, sadly, my ally did end up falling right there. Uh, but controlling these lanes and figuring out exactly what you want to be deploying and what you need to be pushing forward with is huge. On top of that, what we also have is... I will go over the hero, by the way, in a second. But on top of that, what we also have is the one ability right here that has a very long cooldown but as you can see what happens is that everyone will i believe in this in this scenario gain a bunch of um gain a bunch of um um a movement speed and attack speed if i'm not mistaken 
Yeah, attack speed and movement speed indeed. But you have different options for that available as well. You pick those outside of the game. Before the game starts, you can pick the different perks that you have right there. Um, and on top of that, I also have a second ability right there that damages uh, the enemy heroes, or the enemy minions rather, and I can be pushing forward with that. So, basically what it comes down to is that while we are playing a normal, quote-unquote normal, RTS style game, I'm also, in the meantime, controlling what is going on in each lane with the minions that I'm spawning, and we're trying to figure out what is best. So right now it's still 50-50, uh, it's actually advising me to start putting out some of those things right here, which is the fourth minion, uh, which is an airbase, which is good against the fourth, or for, uh, versus the pathfinders right there, uh, but that's the basic idea. Now, besides that, obviously, we are also having control of you know, the heroes and whatnot. So in this specific scenario, I, I believe I'm like some sort of utility slash damage dealer sort of hero. I haven't really been able to play all of the different ones right here. This AI is completely going to town right here. Can actually try and push him backwards. Ooh. Didn't quite get him. Oh, we did end up uh, picking him off right there. Nice move right there. Uh, one thing that is also pretty cool about this, we'll wait for him to come back so we don't lose any of the experience. But one thing that's also pretty cool is that we can actually go back to our base um, yeah, by, uh, by hitting the, the evacuation ability right here. So I'm going to actually be doing that right now as she is coming back in. But basically what happens after a timer goes off, an airship will pick me up and will return me back to the base. Now back in the base, I can go ahead and actually spend the points that I have been gathering right here. So these points are um, basically allowing me to customize my character. So I can go for extra weapon damage, attack speed, health, armor, power, cooldown reduction. Or we can just click the auto upgrade button right here that will automatically pick what is going on. Uh, so in this scenario, it went for the armor, for the power, and the cooldown reduction. Now on top of that, we also have different skills that we can go ahead and activate right here. Um, and basically what this entire screen comes down to is just a ton of customization of what you want to be going for uh, when you are playing the game. And obviously at some point, you know, players will figure out what the most ideal playstyle is. But as it is right now, you can sort of do whatever you want and it works quite well. So it looks like bot, or bot lane is being pushed in quite hard. I think we are going to be joining the top lane right now. What I can do is actually also use the drop off ability. And and the drop-off ability is an ability that has a very long cooldown, but what happens is that I enter this little airplane and get back into the battle much, much faster than you usually would. Uh, so it's a very cool ability. As you can see, the cooldown of it is 350 seconds, so I can really only use this, like, you know, a couple times in each game. But it's a very, very nice way of, of um, you know, of playing the game. It's, it's very fun to be messing around with, for sure. Gotta be a little careful right here. Uh, a couple of abilities that my hero here has in particular, I'm going to be moving forward as well, by the way, keep spawning more and more minions. Uh, a couple of abilities that my hero has, first off, I got a Q ability that's basically just a skill shield in a line, that first off throws a ball and then returns it back to me dealing damage. Then we got the E ability that basically um, has this little thing right here that I can activate, and once it, once it um, charges up, which takes about a second or so, it will push whoever is in this line uh, towards the destination. So basically, in this sense, it would push from left to right. Um, now, those are the hero abilities that I got. I got the W ability as well. Very soon, we will be owning up the um, ultimate ability as well. Um, and all in all, it's just, you know, your regular Q Q QWER uh, ability kind of selection that you have when playing the game. Uh, one other thing right here that I have as well is the center drone giving me a bunch of vision. Uh, so I can put this down right here and we'll, we'll keep on gaining vision of that area. So right now my ultimate is available. I do actually kind of want to get a second charge of uh, the ethereal or a first charge of the ethereal drift. So I will be able to start using that as well. You can do some pretty cool wombo combos with this hero. Uh, it's really fun. But in general, I do have I do have a relatively low cooldown. So what I can do, for example, right there is activate that ability. As you can see, it teleports them forward. It also works on allies. That's so something to keep in mind. Okay, gonna activate my ult right here. Basically, what this one does on this specific hero is push heroes towards me, which may or may not have been the best decision making right there. And I do end up falling, but that's all. Uh, that's all besides the point. So, if we have a quick look once again at the forces, you can see right now we have started pushing forward a little bit more, and it's advising me to go for one of these ships. So I do have three gold available right now, or I do need three more gold right here to activate a second one. So for the time being, I'll just use another one right here. Uh, but basically, what happens, like I mentioned, is that in the next wave. Um, where is my wave? I haven't actually found it yet. It should be a green little one. Where is it? Am I blind? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's not really besides. Oh, there we go. Uh, so you can see like those are spawning and in 30 seconds they will start uh, going around as well. So we're gonna be uh, walking forward with those. And I'm basically just gonna start buying more and more uh, of those minions and making sure that I counter the hero or the minions that my opponents are going for. So right now it's looking quite alright. We're actually doing quite well. 
Uh, towers in the game are relatively strong. Uh, one thing to note though about the minions is that there is like a maximum amount of them that you can actually be deploying But once you start stacking up a lo lot of gold, which will undoubtedly happen later on into the game You can start selling your old minions and actually go ahead and trigger new ones um, Or you can go ahead and actually basically upgrade them right here with elite training Which is also pretty interesting basically just making them more powerful. So usually you will do that um, you know, you will have that much gold like 1200 gold by the time you're actually, you know, playing against um, against, um, you know, like a, a full stack of uh, the opposing minions and a full stack of your own minions as well. So I'm gonna be activating my one ability right there, pushing forward a little bit more, gonna keep on moving forward and just, you know, try and be annoying. So that guy right there uh, makes me think a lot of um, Anubarak in Heroes of the Storm, as you guys may already imagine. Uh, very, very similar in a lot of ways. Um, although I haven't played a game with him, he does really feel like it. Now one thing to note about the game is that heroes are a lot less impactful. And whether or not that is a good thing or not is obviously going to be a decision that you can make. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of RTS games in general. I played a ton of StarCraft 2. And um, I absolutely love the idea of having MOBA aspects in the game. I'm just not 100% certain. Or uh, RTS aspects in the game. I'm just not 100% certain if this is really impactful enough. I mean, it is very impactful and it is uh, dealing a bunch of damage. But I'm not 100% certain if it's going to be something that is really enjoyable to do. If that makes any sense. Now, we may get a kill right there. Did get a kill right there. Very good. Uh, but I'm not 100% certain how enjoyable it is to really be, you know, controlling the minions that are in the lane. Um, obviously, right now, that we only have four available. I secretly hope that there will be a lot more. Maybe we'll get them. Maybe they're already in the game once we start leveling up. Um, I haven't been able to obviously play like tons and tons of games with this But it'd be cool if we have like crazy amounts of, uh, of, of minions that we can be picking and like upgrade them Like significantly which would make it um, in my opinion a lot more interesting. Well, we'll see. We'll see how this game turns out to be And now obviously one downside of the fact that minions are so important is the is the um, effect of the hero being less important because we are spending so much time managing the lanes and managing what minions are going to be in each lane uh, we obviously spend a lot less time deciding um, you know what the hero is going to be like and while there is a lot of customization and a lot of potential right there heroes does do feel a little bit less insig or a little bit more insignificant if that makes any sense like um, I've been playing a lot of heroes of the storm I've played some dota and League of Legends in the past as well and you can definitely feel like you're extremely impactful but in this game I've noticed at least thus far that the hero feels like it's not having as much of a impact now it may very well come down to the fact that the um, you know, the commander upgrades and the automated, like, the, the perfect builds and whatnot aren't figured out yet. Uh, so maybe at some point, you know, they will get figured out and we'll have an easy time figuring out, um, you know, what is going to be strong and some crazy combinations that we can use with the different heroes. But as it is right now, heroes don't feel extremely powerful, if that makes any sense. Like, we're cleaning up minions and whatnot, but it doesn't feel like I'm actually significantly stronger, for example, than some of the other ones. Uh, they are in the game right here. So I'm gonna be activating my ult once again, trying to do whatever damage I can, activating the abilities that I got, and we get a kill. Very good. I suppose this is his ultimate. We are stuck in that circle. Get out of there, woman. I don't want you in here. Ooh, I actually would have teleported it to us. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. Anyway, one thing to note about the W ability is that I can actually activate it on myself right there as well, um, which is, oh, where are we? Where are we? <laughs> we can activate it on ourselves as well, and what happens is that we basically get a little shield. If you activate it on an enemy, it will slow them down, if I'm not mistaken. So, I do have the option right there, and it does make them a little slower. So pretty cool. Um, now, at this point in time, there are not tons and tons of heroes available. Obviously, the uh, game will have more heroes available the longer it goes on. Um, and um, it will actually be following like a very standard monetization model as well uh, Just like all of the other mobas are basically doing right now where you buy heroes and you can come back into the game and um, You know get fancy skins as well and apparently you even will be able to get minion skins Anyway, so let's have a quick look at the hero screens that we have available right now looks like we need a couple more of these buggies Which are pretty useful uh, What lane should we be pushing in? I'm gonna go to the bottom lane right here Actually, I'm gonna stand in this little platform so I can once again use the little ship ability that I can uh, basically be flying across the lanes with really, really quickly. Now, in general, the games do take quite a longer amount of time that I've been getting used to lately. Um, most of the Heroes of the Storm game, which is the game that I play primarily when I want to play a MOBA, um, they take about 20 minutes or so, and this game um, seems to be taking up to like 30 to 40 minutes, more of like a, uh, a Dota slash League of Legends type timing, which is all good. Oh no, oh no. Friends, please help! Oh man, my friends almost... 
They didn't want me anymore. No All good though. All good. Um, the game also feels a little bit slower than, than the other MOBAs out there. Also not necessarily a bad thing, but it does feel like it's a little bit slower. May also be the very fact that I'm assuming right here that the servers that I'm playing on are... Um, you know, having some, some latency issues, but my hero doesn't seem to be responding to me nearly as fast as it does in some of the other MOBA games. Obviously, those are the kind of things, though, that are very easy to fix um, when the game is still in a beta. Um, now, the game doesn't feature an item shop or anything like that. We cannot actually uh, purchase any items, but all of the customization is done through the different upgrades and the different, um, the different um, abilities that we choose and the different strategies that we have for the hero composition. And it mainly comes down to the fact that we um, have a uh, we have a lot of customization as far as the lane goes and whatnot. Yeah, so there's no there's no gold that we gather and that we can spend on items. The gold that we gather, we spend on... Um, okay, I'm using my ult here once again. Uh, the gold that we gather, we spend on the minions in the lanes and less so on the... Oh, nice. And less so on the... Um, oh, come on. Get him! Really? Wow, I gotta be real careful. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> we did get him right there. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's spent on the minions in the lane and less so on the other stuff. I'm gonna be having a look once again. Gotta go for a second one of those things. Uh, one thing to note as well is that we do have uh, neutral creeps available on the map. And we can use those to get to our extra experience. I will do so in a little bit uh, once we have cleaned up all of these minions. I think we're gonna go back again and actually... Um, check out some of the neutral creeps as well. So on the map there are different places right here where we can activate... Uh, there we go by the way. Uh, there's different places on the map right here where we can... Uh, check out little minion camps, um, and they do provide us with some experience, and I believe they give us some gold as well. Um, pretty basic right there, obviously. Um, now, the map that we are playing on right now is sort of like the default um, the default uh, MOBA-style map. There will be different maps available as well that will make it a little more interesting. I'm actually going to be getting the upgrade resource income right here. That will give me more resources over time. But I'm going to be activating this thing right here. Just trying to see how quickly I can actually kill those. I've not actually done any kind of creep camp killing on these heroes yet, but it looks like it is easy enough at this point. Um, and we can also see the respawn timer right there of when they will be coming back. You can check out some of the other ones as well. Uh, one funny thing that is on the top of the screen right here actually as well, these little grid type icons, you may have noticed those already. Uh, basically what those indicate is how many towers and whatnot are still available, so you can quickly see what team is ahead and what isn't. Uh, this camp is a little bit more difficult to kill, if I'm not mistaken. All good, though. We should be able to easily clean this one up as well. Um, but um, right now, we are slightly ahead. We are at the same level right now. Uh, we have the total attribute points as well, which is the, the points of each hero. And I think we're just going to be going for a second one right there. So this one is actually surprisingly powerful. Oh, no. Where did I do it? We actually need to be a little careful here. Can I activate that? I can we don't really want to activate an ultimate ability on this, though. Okay, okay, Loco, get out of there! Oh, look! That, that is, that is, that is embarrassing. That is embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, they do spawn every couple minutes, and, um, turns out my hero isn't the greatest at killing, like, the harder camp right here. The size of the icon on the map, I suppose, indicates how strong the camp is. We also actually have a boss camp right here. Uh, that we can activate. It's not like Heroes of the Storm or anything where they will start joining you in the fight, but you will get some extra uh, some extra uses out of them. So right now we have a bunch of access gold, and we are already uh, maxed out on what we have. So what I can do actually is sell a couple of my forces and get more of these um, get more of these scorpions or, for example, dragonflies going. So what I can do is actually go ahead right here. Sell a couple of these guys, which we don't really need anymore, and add a couple more of these dragonflies, which are significantly more expensive, uh, which are these flying machine type things that you can see right here. Um, so in the next creep wave, that will be spawning in one minute and three, uh, I believe at the very least, they will be going ahead very shortly and start pushing forward with that as well, there will be a lot more um, of those minions, and there will be a lot more interesting to be checking out right there as well. Now, one thing to obviously be discussing when it comes to new MOBAs is how they will be stacking up against the competition. Because let's face it, MOBAs are a genre that are extremely gener like extremely populated already. And for the most part, there are already, you know, tons and tons of tournaments out there that are all covering MOBAs and that are all, um, you know, having their own little flavor. 
Is this game really making enough of a difference um, to become one of the main esports in that area? And I am honestly, at this point in the game, or at this point in the product cycle of this game, not 100% certain if it will be able to do so. Um, obviously, you know, it is very difficult to be entering a market like that, but also, on top of that, it is very difficult to get players to switch over from a certain RTS or from a certain MOBA to watch a different MOBA. I mean, is there one great reason why, for example, a Dota 2 player would go ahead and give up their Dota 2 place and actually go for this game instead. I mean, there is obviously a lot of customization uh, possible right here because of the minion waves, but is that something you will really be able to sell a customer with? Uh, I can imagine, because I'm a, I'm a big RTS nerd, I actually would find this very interesting and it is something that I would really like to be checking out more of and I actually really enjoy playing this so far. Uh, but I can imagine that like the general public um, they've been getting a lot more casual over the last couple of years, and I would not be surprised if this is a very difficult game to start marketing towards, you know, the MOBA audience, because, you know, it's just very difficult to be explaining these type of games. And on top of that, becoming an eSport is in general not very easy. Um, they are saying that they would like to make this game as eSport friendly as possible, um, and they do want to, like, enter the upper echelons of the eSport space, is what they uh, mentioned in the, um, in the uh, little information... Uh, Booth that they did give to me. Um, and I'm not 100% certain if the game at this point uh, will be able to. Both because the timing of the game, obviously, you know, with so many MOBAs already out there, is pretty tough. Obviously, it takes a couple years to produce a game, so when they started up this uh, this whole spiel, it must have been, uh, you know, a different time in a different place. But I wonder how successful a game can really be. And I actually wonder what you guys' thoughts are on that as well. So let me know down below the like button in the comment section of this video um, what you think. Um, you know, this game could need, for example, in order to become very popular, or that's something, or something that would make you want to switch over from the MOBA that you are playing currently to the MOBA um, that we are watching right now. Um, now, there is a vast amount of customization, which I actually really enjoy. You can be playing this game while not even playing the game, if that makes sense. Like, there's a lot of things to be discussing, and a lot of things to consider while not even playing it. Um, which is actually kind of interesting because, you know, you can figure out what the ideal builds are, you can figure out all the different strategies. So if you're like a theory crafter, you can actually get a lot of different information about that, and there's a lot of things to, to figure out, so to say, whereas in like, you know, a, in a more casual MOBA, it is, it is pretty difficult to figure, or it's not that hard to figure out exactly what the ideal builds are. Uh, whereas in this game, there's tons of customization, and, you know, the different builds will allow you to play all the different characters differently. And, oh! It is something that I think is a lot of interest in. I just wonder how good it's really going to be. So here we can see, by the way, all of the dragonflies are actually joining this right here as well. I actually really enjoyed it. It's pretty cool that the uh, buggies right now are here as well. Uh, obviously, we'll need to figure out how our opponents are going to be defending against this. I think I'm going to have to start heading back, though. Uh, I will be able to join very quickly again. So I'm going to be going back right now. It takes about 10 seconds to get back, and then I'm going to you know, fly immediately back in here. Although it looks like we aren't really pushing forward anymore. It looks like maybe selling all of these buggies wasn't the greatest choice. I'm gonna go for the elite training right here, which is one of the things that I discussed previously. Uh, this is the one that costs 1200 minerals, or 1200 uh, gold right there, or 1200 resources. And what happens is that... Um, I'm gonna be joining this lane as well. What happens right now is that these minions will become elite minions, and they will take 25 less damage. 60% uh, less damage from commanders and 40% less damage. So basically all I know what I'm trying to say is that it makes the minions stronger. Okay, get all the damage, get all the damage in. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Oh, I did miss my ability right there. Could have killed them both. Ugh, I could have definitely killed them both right there. That's really unfortunate, actually. Should have probably waited a little bit with using my, uh, using my skills. Um, now, we'll see exactly what this game is going to be all about in in a couple months' time. I'm not 100% certain exactly when they plan on releasing this, um, but I can imagine that they do want to, you know, get it out to the public soon. I mean, the game plays wonderfully. There's nothing really to complain about here, um, other than the heroes feeling a little bit sluggish right now, which may very well be a, or a, a server issue thing, like I already mentioned. Um, but the game is definitely very smooth to play. It doesn't really feel like a beta anymore to be honest like it's it's a closed beta right now it's very smooth it's pretty much done it feels like and I don't know exactly what they what they mean uh, to be adding right now I assume they want to be adding on more heroes and whatnot as well um, but um you know as it is right now it feels like one of these things that is practically done we gotta get out of here I don't have this much nope nope don't quite want to go 
you know, 1v1 at this point in the game. Uh, I'm not 100% certain either on, like, hero balance. It may very well be that the heroes aren't very balanced yet. Uh, I may be playing one of the worst heroes in the game. Could very well be the case. Uh, but, um... I assume, like, if they're, if they're still adding on new heroes, that that is going to be the final push they will try and make for uh, before the release of the game, because everything else, honestly, feels very, very good. <clears throat> so, the special abilities right here that are on the long cooldown, like I mentioned, you select before, um, before the game starts, and they all have an impact on the actual minion lanes once again. So, slowly but surely, we are pushing forward right now. Looks like one of the towers has gone down right here as well. Uh, but you can see, like, so far into the game, uh, it's a little bit slow. It is definitely a little slow. Like, we've been playing for 23 minutes. I haven't really had any kind of big team fights. We are um, slightly, slightly ahead right now, killing one more tower of them. Uh, and they have killed... Um, you know, they've got, a, they've got a slightly higher level, but we are slightly ahead at this point. But what we need to do right now is just, you know, keep on moving forward and slowly but surely get in there. Uh, now, one thing that I would like to uh, that I would like to point out is that none of the hero like abilities feel super like flashy or whatever. If that makes any sense. Like, there's a lot of explosions and stuff, and we deal a bunch of damage with them, but they don't seem to be making like a massive impact. For example, something that that I yeah, some something I guess a good example would be um, Thrall's earthquake ability in Heroes of the Storm. I mean, that one changes up the entirety of the screen, whereas in this game, it feels like you know it's it's having some impact. But nothing too massive, you know? Uh, that's just a graphical thing, obviously, because, you know, the, the abilities definitely are very impactful. Uh, but for, like, a observer of an esports game, I can't imagine that that would be kind of difficult to follow, you know? I mean, I guess it I guess it would be more clear. I guess that's actually an upside to both of the things, now I think about it out loud. But uh, I can't imagine that there is... Um, that there is definitely a market for people that want to watch flashy things happen. And in this game, uh, it doesn't seem to be super impactful. And obviously that is part of me not knowing every single hero, but at least that's one of the things I've noticed when I first started, um, you know, watching any of the gameplay trailers and, you know, those kind of things. Now our goal for the game, like I mentioned, is killing the opposing auger. The auger is all the way located over here. Um, we are going to be pushing forward a little bit. Our top guard tower is under attack. Oh no, our top guard tower is under attack. Uh, one thing that I've actually also a little worried for is like, how would this game turn out to be um, later on when... Oh wow, she just died to a tower. I mean, I died to minions earlier. But one thing um, that I'm also a little confused about is um, how the lane micro will really start to be once people figure out the ideal composition. I mean, as it is right now, uh, we really only have four different options right here, right? four different minions and I can't imagine that there is like a ideal way or like an ideal composition of minions that we have going on so I can't imagine that there will be like a perfect composition that will be ideal in almost in every scenario um, you do get like a little counter screen right here that you can see and you can have a good idea of what we need uh, but basically it's telling me right now that we need a little bit of everything um, I guess I guess we will we'll sell a couple of those and add a couple of those now uh, but I mean, how impactful will that really be? I mean, it will it will show us in about a minute or so to know exactly what's going on. We're actually a little bit behind right now. They're pushing very hard at the at the top lane. All right, we're gonna go back real quick, and then I'm gonna go join up the top lane right here and start pushing with them as well. There we go. I do really like this pickup mechanic, though. It's a nice little visual right here, and it's giving us uh, you know the idea of that we're moving around the battlefield very quickly. There we go. We're in here. Let's defend the tower. Okay, the ultimate ability is being activated right now. A lot of damage being done. Sadly, we don't have anyone else helping us out right here. Did get a kill on the first one. He's gonna be able to teleport out of there once again. Alright, so did it manage to push one of our towers as well? There's only, uh, there's only six more available right now. Uh, neither team really having an advantage thus far though. We seem to be pretty evenly matched so far. I'm just uh, no better than the medium AI, <laughs> which is all good. Um, also, as far as like carrying goes in this game, so one of the downsides of a game like Heroes of the Storm is that you um, don't really have that much hero customization, and it's very hard to focus on like you know completely carrying a game. 
unless you have a very good team, comp uh, team composition and you're fighting 5v5, it's difficult to win. Um, I can imagine that in this game something very similar could be the case, because so much of it uh, will have to do with um, with these lanes and these minions and whatnot, that um, team fights will be extremely focused on you know whoever has more heroes available at the time. I can imagine that pretty much any kind of team fight in this game will be very hard to win if it's going to be a 4v5, right? Like, let's say we are 4 and they are 5, they're likely going to be winning all of those engagements, um, like it is true in, in Heroes of the Storm, whereas in some of the other MOBAs out there, uh, it is definitely possible to win a team fight even with lower uh, with lower uh, skills, so to say, or with lower hero amounts. Well, we got once again got our ultimates available, we got some crazy good synergy right there. Um, but since the lanes are so impactful, their heroes are a little less impactful, I can't imagine that you know, that is gonna be something we need to be, we need to, uh, we need to keep here in mind as well. well. I need to level up. We're actually already got all of the abilities maxed out right now. Alright. Keep on pushing forward right here. Um, now, like I mentioned, if you're interested in checking out the game, there will be a link down below in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and check it out right there as well. How's our lane presence doing? 52%. We need still more buggies, really? Okay, fine. We'll go full buggy mode. They're actually not called buggies. They're called scorpions. <clears throat> Alright. Pushing forward here. We are getting closer and closer to their tower, but in the meantime, while we are pushing into the bot lane, or the top lane right here, the bot lane is being pushed right there as well. It's gonna be interesting though, like, I um, I hope to be able to get like a little team of five people online as well. I know there's multiple content creators right now that are making videos for this game. It'd be really cool to see how this game f turns out to be when you have five people, um, you know, playing together and trying to, you know, win the games. Um, versus like another team of five. That would be, that would, that would be the ultimate test for a game like this. Um, where you actually, you know, have like a, a, a solid team composition. I don't think I will be able to set something up like that in this beta anymore. I will try and do so for the next stages of the development of this game, but... Oh, no, no, don't get hit. Alright, they get out of there. Gotta go back. Uh, so once again, I'm going to be turning off the auto upgrade right here just to see exactly what happens. So we need to go back towards the base platform right now to pick out what we want to be doing. So we have, uh, oh, actually it picked pretty much everything we already had. Uh, so we have one proficiency point right here that we can use to customize. Uh, I'm going to go with an extra power right here and extra health, that'd be cool. Uh, and I'm going to be going with extra caster damage right here. So there's tons of different ones available. As you can see, we only have... Um, you know, the suggested ones open right there, but there's a ton more available. And this is what I mean with customization yes. when you're not even playing the game. Um, there's a lot to be, there's a lot to be figuring out right there as well. Alright, so skip forward about 30 minutes right here. We've been pushing slowly but surely towards the victory right now. Uh, but this is actually a pretty good example. We've been in this game for a very long time and it is still not over. And obviously partly due to the fact that bots don't really group up together in this game and they don't actually you know, join the team fights very much. Right now there's three people in one lane and we are pushing significantly faster than we were before. Uh, but still, like, it's been it's been a long time. We've been playing for a long time right here and the game is still not finished up. We still need to be pilling um, or killing the opponent's core as well, uh, which is not something that's done yet. So we have finally made it to the opposing team's auger right here. This will obviously make our lanes way stronger right now. Um, the lanes obviously, you know, we are killing off their minions right now immediately and considering the minion waves are such a big deal in this game We're actually killing all of their stuff almost immediately right there Which means that right now we should be able to get a pretty solid advantage going right here Now we do need to kill these little things here first. We can actually go ahead I, I think we can actually start attacking the thing right away, but it's kind of a risk not really worth it We may as well just kill these little things first, uh, but we basically cleaned up all of the minion waves uh, before you know, they actually could really start dealing damage. And I think in a little bit, especially with be activating the uh, extra elite forces right now, we will be able to start pushing closer and closer and closer. All right, so we did just gain Battlefield Supremacy here as well a little while later once again. We're pushing slowly but surely towards their auger and we have a pretty massive push incoming right now. Uh, finally, the, um, the uh, AIs right here started queuing up a little bit as well. They did just get taken out for no apparent reason, but we should be okay here. We should be able to keep on pushing now. 
and we actually have someone joining us in the middle lane right now as well. Now their minions are spawning right where we are at, so that is something to uh, to kill as soon as we possibly can, but I do have a nice couple of AoE spells. Ultimate is done in 12 seconds, gotta be careful that I don't go down. Sadly, it looks like my teammate have once again left me though. Come on, Eos! Eos AI, I really need your help right now! Alright, we have everyone joining in right now. Philandry is just moving in right now as well, which is here in a couple seconds time. We're pushing pretty hard here. Obviously, I don't want to go down. Loco, no, 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 don't go down, don't go down. Okay, good. Good. We have four of our heroes right here right now. I don't have my flight available yet, but I am going to go back right now real quick. Because also I'm a little bit too low. They're activating ult right now as well. I do want to go back in a little bit though. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be heading back. I can't use that here. Oh, okay. And sadly, we did get taken out right there, at least for a little while. But we are closer and closer and closer to killing the enemy auger. Okay, so we're pushing really hard right now. Their auger is actually getting super low in health. I don't know if we actually are able to finish this one off though. Oh, looks like we're a little too greedy. Oh, their auger is so close. It's so close to dying. There we go. Boom. Whew. That took quite some time though, but in the end, we did manage to gain the victory right here. So all in all, Supernova, really fun game to be messing around with for sure. It does have a lot of potential. I hope that will, you know, make the game play a little bit faster because honestly, that's the one thing that I feel it's missing right now. Could be very well because I'm playing with AIs though and I'm playing with computers, obviously. If you're actually playing in a 5v5 and you group up together and you just right click on the uh, on the auger right there, we may have been able to finish this off like a much, much earlier. Uh, but other than that, that was definitely a really fun game. Let me know what you think about it right below in the comment section of this video. And other than that, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile and I will see you in the next one.